this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday It's been so insane watching Cody and I's vision become a reality. When we decided to take on this crazy project, we had no idea how wild the ride would really be. With everything that we went through, I would be lying if I said that it wasn't incredibly discouraging and at times we wanted to throw in the towel. But watching everything take form over the past few weeks has been incredibly rewarding and I know that Cody and I are so much stronger in the end. There is still so much to be done. I mean, the inside of our home is still a complete blank slate, but we're just enjoying every minute of it. The weather has drastically changed, the leaves are falling, and winter is quickly approaching. While we do feel prepared, that doesn't mean the work is over. Our next project is to enclose the underneath of our containers and start working on the deck. I don't really look at it much before, but it looks like it's mostly just dirt. We really shouldn't have to do a whole lot of prep or anything like that. Like there's a tiny bit of rust right at the bottom just from like it sitting on the ground and stuff like that sometimes, but. In the crevices, yeah. it's mostly dirt. Yeah, most of the paint's still good up at the top of the sea channels and everything. So we should be able to just paint the bottom to keep it from rusting anymore and we should be good to go. There's an old nest right there. Nothing's living in it currently, but kind of cute to see. So just like the walls of the container, the support beams underneath are made out of cordon steel. Cordon steel has added phosphorus, nickel, copper, and things like that increase the metal's resistance to atmospheric corrosion. So it'll actually build up a rust patina on the top of it, and that prevents the metal itself from being able to rust. We showed this a lot in our prep to paint video, and I'll throw in a clip here where you can see a lot of that is just surface rust. And so underneath the container, there's not really any rust, and where there is, it's mostly just surface. We're not seeing a lot of the big crusts that we did see on the main surface of the container that was constantly being splashed with water during shipping or being beat during shipping and things like that. A lot of the issues are like forklifts running into it with the forks and creating dents, and then that makes the paint chip off, and then that exposes the metal to be able to actually start rusting and start that preventative rust process. Or anywhere that the paint hasn't chipped off at and still is adhered very well, there isn't really any rust at all. Being that underneath the containers are less susceptible to those impacts, there's not really a whole ton of rust to be concerned about. So we kind of got lucky in that department. We'll pretty much just go over with the rust converting primer on the little bit of spots that do have rust, which is mostly just the very bottom from it sitting on the ground and getting rubbed on the actual bottom of the ground. And then we'll be able to insulate and get it all enclosed. It's quite chilly out today, so let's throw on an extra layer, grab our supplies and get to work. I think I'm gonna switch to a different attachment. The middle of the containers are perfect, great, rarely any rust. If so, it's right on the edges. However, the ends of the containers are a little bit more rusty. So I am gonna go ahead and take an angle grinder and go along the edges and do a lot of prep work on the ends because we are seeing a little bit more of that surface rust and a little bit more of that crusting on the ends. If y'all remember, we're supposed to be getting that big freeze, and that's tonight. So while I've been prepping underneath the containers, Cody's been going around the property prepping it for the freeze. Should do for tonight. 
I contemplated if I even wanted to show y'all what he's doing right now. The fact of the matter is, is our channel is based on real life and sometimes real life things happen like forgetting to do stuff. Something that slipped our mind was we have a pee trap in our bathroom because we have a shipping container house that had to be placed outside and it slipped our mind to insulate it. We're gonna be insulating the floor here in the next week probably. We'll build a, a removable insulated box to go around that pee trap. I contemplated posting it because I know we're gonna get a lot of backlash and people in the comments telling us that's not the appropriate way to do things but this is real life and sometimes you forget about things and it's like oh my gosh it's gonna freeze tonight what do we do we have no materials and I don't want to go into town so a bucket and some really good insulation will do for now. As far as the rest of our drain pipes go, as long as there's not a clog in the pipe, then there's not really anywhere for water to stand and accumulate so it won't freeze in the drain pipe. However, whenever we insulate the floor, we'll go ahead and put some uh, foam insulation on top of the pipe just to be safe. But for tonight's freeze, we're not really concerned. We worked until we couldn't see, called it a night, and spent the rest of the afternoon with our dogs. Our first freeze last night went great. The ducks didn't freeze, so that's a good sign. Yeah. As well as none of the water lines froze or anything like that. Checked the water temperature out of the lines this morning with the temp gun, and it was about 50 degrees, so it's really not bad for it being 24 outside. And then I came and opened the door for the pump house this morning, and I could actually feel the temperature difference inside the pump house versus outside. It was a lot colder. Hey, that was working pretty well too, so I think we're pretty much well set for winter. Go on, get in the water. Go on. And are we swimming? What do you think, girls? Boys. Boys. I don't think they know what to do. <laughs> this is great. Now, how are we gonna get them? Come on, guys. Whack, whack. Did y'all enjoy your morning swim? <laughs> we wanted to test it out and not bad. Yeah, not I'd bad. Say they liked it. They liked it. They didn't try to run away, though, so I'm thankful for that. Good job. <laughs> right to their house. Full riding. <laughs> We found all these logs up at the front of the property whenever we first bought it. I'm assuming the power company probably cut it down to make sure, you know, it wasn't gonna fall on their lines or anything like that. It's all been cut down for quite a while, so the majority of it is already dry. So it splits super easy and we don't have to wait to burn it. I know, it's wild. I wish I could explain how light this is or I wish y'all could feel it, but very, very, very light. Compared to the hardwood next to it, oh yeah. This morning has been quite productive on the property and we were able to get a lot of little things done, but now it's time to get to the main project at hand, under the containers. of the containers and getting off what rush chips are left Cody has been going around and painting what has already been prepped and ready to go we're using rust oleum's rusty metal primer it's for use on heavily rusted metal it's the same color as rust so when you look under here it looks very orange um, that is not rust that's actually the primer he spot primering it where he needs to and then doing a thin layer on everything else for the most part this job is not as hard as we thought it was going to be 
And we don't have to go crazy into depth with it either because since we're going to be enclosing the crawl space and insulating the crawl space walls, we're going to be controlling the actual moisture content down below the house. So because we'll be able to keep that moisture to a minimum, it'll really help it prevent anything from rusting any further. Let's get the rest of this painted and then we'll talk to y'all about what we're going to do for siding it. We have one container down, one container to go. This container is prepped. This project is going to be cutting wood with our sawmill. Decided that we're not gonna insulate the floor, we're going to insulate the walls. So when doing a crawl space, you pretty much have two main choices. Either you can insulate the floor and leave the crawl space vented, or you can insulate the walls of the crawl space and completely enclose it and have it non-vented. Because we live in a more humid climate, it tends to get really hot and humid here in the summer. Our choosing to go with the enclosed version as opposed to the vented version, that way we can keep the crawl space as part of the conditioned part of the house. It'll stay relatively insulated in that whole space rather than just trying to keep the floor warm. And that'll also help keep the moisture content down so if we were to put fiberglass insulation on the floor and leave it vented and open then the fiberglass insulation would be more likely to accumulate moisture in the humid months and then whenever it accumulates that moisture it pretty much becomes useless wet fiberglass is pretty much the same as no insulation by doing this we'll be using foam board instead of fiberglass and it should be a lot better because we changed how we're going to do this before we were going to insulate and then enclose and now we need to enclose and then insulate so this whole project is going to be coming a lot sooner and we are going to be cutting a ton of sawmill wood in next week's video super dark super cold outside so definitely not going to do anything the rest of the night except for can i have a ton of red jalapenos here um, that need to be canned so i'm going to get them chopped up make my brine pop them in the canner and i should be good to go i've never done jalapenos before so we shall see babe will you do my jars yes i will thank you So now I'm gonna make my brine, which is three and a half cups of white vinegar. That was just perfect, because now I'm out. <laughs> a cup of water, and then this is optional, but I'm gonna do a tablespoon of pickling salt. I'm gonna bring it up to a boil, and then once it's boiling, I'm gonna let it simmer for like five minutes or so. I need to let them sit for about four to five weeks before we can even eat them, but I'm going to take y'all's suggestions, wait 24 hours, check the seals, and then remove the rings and completely leave the rings off. Now we add peppers to the list of things that we have tried to can. Look at Maya. She has a chair. Yeah. Hi, we're tired, so we're going to end it from the couch versus standing up because I'm exhausted. That takes a lot of energy. <laughs> Kelly says, do you plan on having a functioning farm for just y'all to have your own food and resources? I would say definitely. I know we want to at least have a cow at some point or... True. What? I just so random. Just one. 
Just one yeah, cow. Yeah, just one cow. <laughs> Maybe two. I don't know. I mean, we don't, you know, we live in the middle of the woods, so we don't want to have to clear a ton of land for a ton of animals or anything like that, but at the same time, it would be nice to know where our meat comes from, so. Very I don't important. know, maybe we'll get a cow eventually, maybe we'll just try and stick with venison and just keep meat from the store, I guess, I don't know. It'll really just depend, um, obviously we counted on our ducks for eggs, but <laughs> that didn't work out, yeah, so. so. We'll have to get some more ducks. Yeah, we're gonna have to get some more ducks, and then I think we've talked about meat chickens, so we might do that, you know, way in the future. For right now, um, I won't be bringing anything home again for a while <laughs> without consulting him first. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. But yes, I want to have a hobby farm, I guess. I want I want a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. So just a, a little dabble of everything. So yes, for sure, more animals to come in the future. Yeah, maybe a peacock, maybe a donkey, I mean, who knows. Lynn says, do y'all have carbon monoxide detectors in your house? And I wanted to throw this in because we actually got this comment quite a few times last week. And I'm assuming it's because we said that we had headaches and back pain and all of that. And that was essentially just from working on painting and grinding the containers, having your hands above your head for some periods of time, oh, we'll do a number on your back. That was definitely from that, but we do have carbon monoxide detectors in our home. As well as smoke detectors. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, I've kind of always just had problems with headaches, so. Get these migraines and then he'll have to like basically lay down in a dark room the entire day and just not be bothered. So that's something that he kind of deals with. And then when I get stressed out or I don't sleep or I work a ton, I get really bad migraines. And last week it was a 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. every single day for about five days straight kind of week. Thankfully, things have slowed down just a little bit and my body's been able to relax, but yeah. I'm just kind of contributing my headache to just lack of sleep. and all of that. Yeah, and we haven't had any more problems since then. Mm -hmm. But yes, yeah, so we do have carbon dioxide detectors. I'm looking at one right yeah, now. Yeah, we have one in every room and then we have smoke detectors in every room. So, yeah. and we've Which had is those. overkill considering we have a tiny home. Yeah. But I'm super, and, super And cautious. we've had those since we had the first fireplace. Mm -hmm. So we've had them for quite a while. I'm very, um... Paranoid. Let's... Yeah, uh, that's it. Summer's always afraid the house is gonna blow up or catch on fire or, or burn down. We're gonna I need him to like explain everything like to me so that so. way I understand it better and then I won't be so paranoid. But I'm yeah. a very paranoid person, so um, yes. Safety is definitely a, a priority in this household. Yes. We're tired. We have so much to do. We're cutting the wood for under our containers. Um, that alone is gonna be a huge project. So he has to change the blade and then get the current log that's on there off and then put the new log on there because that log is supposed to be for stairs. It's a whole process. We'll talk to y'all about it in a few days, but be expecting it. We're definitely excited to have it enclosed and it's going to look so much better. And then we can start working on our deck. So one thing after one thing. Yeah, after I'm one just, thing I'm ready for the deck. That's what I want. Yeah. We're big coffee drinkers and we really need a deck to do that, so. Yeah, and I like storms too. Like mm -hmm. when it's storming really hard, I like to go sit on the porch and watch the storm. So mm -hmm. that's what I, that's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, so. All right. See you in the next one. Bye. I'm ready for bed. Maya, that's probably not the safest place to sleep, ma'am. Baby, don't you understand that we only get